Hey y'all, welcome back to Walk Ready Empowerment Podcast Show, Season 2, where we provide the tools you need to add faith to your purpose. What do that look like? Building up your faith in God, walking in your identity of Jesus Christ, and knowing who you are in Christ. It will catapult you to the next season. We provide Holy Spirit-led tools, so make sure you tune in here weekly, every Monday, where we come and upload new episodes to empower you for your week. So let's get started with today's episode. Hey y'all, welcome, 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 welcome back to Walk Worthy Empowerment Podcast Show with me, Tacola, your faith catalyst. And I am happy to be here today. I want to thank you guys for coming back. For those of you who have been rocking with us for the longest, and if you are a new listener, I want to welcome you as well. Happy Monday, happy Monday. How are you guys feeling today? I hope you guys are doing good. I hope your weekend was good. Mine was pretty well. Uh, We have a lot of things in store for this month. I'm really excited about March because I know you guys been seeing, I love spring anyway, but I know you've been seeing like the flowers are blooming. Everything is just so refreshing during the month of March. And I'm excited because God told me that this will be the month of joy. So We have to pull on that because the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? So we have to make sure we pull it on the joy of the Lord this month specifically and allowing God to really overwhelm us with his joy. I don't know about you guys, but he been surprising me lately in the ways that I never would have thought of. And it's really, he's pulling on my heart screens, you guys. And I know he's softening me up get me very uh palatable I said God I thank you because sometimes when you go through different things in different seasons you don't even notice that your heart get hardened at times because you you so used to fighting you so used to doing things that makes you tougher you know to try to make sure you get these things done but God don't God don't want us like that he want us to be soft and um, I am a woman at the end of the day so he's allowing me to really feel that you know and it feels good it really does and I'm excited I'm really excited for the journey and everything that I'm going to accomplish and I'm excited for you too because if you've been following us walk where the empowerment and you've been following my ministry you guys will reap the fruit of what comes from my ministry and the things that God give me to release to you all and don't give up. That's one thing I want to encourage you on this good old Monday that do not give up in well doing because in due season, you will reap a prize. And that's one thing the Holy spirit been really stressing with me is do not give up, keep going, keep going, keep pushing through. And a lot of times it's not easy. If I can be honest, it's not easy But as long as we keep our eyes focused on what he said and knowing that God's word would not fail, we will be able to reap the harvest of that. So I just want to encourage you guys. I don't know who that's for, but it's for you. So I know you guys see the title of the episode is Be Sober and Be Vigilant, right? I know you probably heard this before and I got a new revelation on it over the weekend. I was doing some studying. And it just kept ringing in my ears, like, be sober, be vigilant, be sober, be vigilant. Because we have to make sure that we're in the proper alignment in this season. Because if you're not sober, if you're not vigilant, and if you're not focusing on what God is really doing, it's easy to miss, right? Because you could get caught up in going the opposite way. I have been there before. We can't forget why God told us to go out and even evangelize, even to go forth in whatever it is that God is calling you to do. So this episode is a reminder to you and to me to be sober, be vigilant in the things of God and knowing that you don't get too distracted in your works and the things that he have you doing, but um, make sure you're focused on God and what he is telling you to do in this season. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Hey, boss moms. Are you tired of keeping all your thoughts in your head, not seeing the fruit of your labor, or are you tired of experiencing 
double-mindedness and really not seeing the fruit of what you're speaking and what you're doing throughout your day, well, you're in the right place. You need my Boss Mom Mental Health Journal. Go to www.walkwalkwaredyempowerment.com to order your journal today. This journal is designed to help you and mentally and spiritually and financially free because it helps you to show gratitude throughout your day and throughout your week. And you are more in tune with how you feel, right? And how you physically feel and how you spiritually feel and get all your thoughts out of your head onto pen and paper. So go to www.walkwaredyempowerment.com and order your boss mom journal today. Because as you focus on that and as you focus on what God is telling you and you will begin to see what you're called to do right and we can't forget the calling we can't forget what we are supposed to be doing because it's easy to be distracted if you're not sober minded if you're not vigilant if you're not watching keeping watch of the things that's going on in your surroundings right that's just like when i before i started my podcast I didn't really know my calling per se. I knew my office. I knew I was called to ministry, but I didn't know my calling. Like I didn't know what he was going to be having me doing in ministry. I didn't know these things until I started my podcast. And that's why now I help other women start their podcast show because it's, it's power in it when you been voiceless. That's why I'm called to the voiceless because when you've been voiceless for years and even from a little girl, a little child, you don't know how it feels when when your voice is unlocked. So that's why I teach this. That's why I help others discover their voice through podcasting because honestly, this is just a tool that God is using now to unlock the power of our voice and that helped me discover my calling. So if you're struggling with that, I really want to help you. I will leave it in the show notes. Um, You guys could book a time on my schedule, on my calendar. I will leave it in the show notes. And let's chit chat. Let's talk. The first 15 minutes is free. And I really want to get to know exactly what your goals are and the struggles that you're dealing with. And we could come up with a plan and let's get you started with your own podcast show. This really will help you in your calling and what you want to do. So when we're talking about being sober, being vigilant, I discovered second Timothy verse four and three in the passion version. It says something very unique. It's basically Paul is encouraging Timothy to preach the gospel despite of opposition. He's letting him know that you're not going to be liked. like many people are going to be closed off to you. But what are you going to do when that happens? Are you going to quit? Let's go there for a second. Go with me to 2 Timothy verse 4 through 3. It says, For the time is coming when they will no longer listen and respond to the healing of truth because they will become selfish and proud. Words of truth because they will become selfish and proud. They will seek out teachers with soothing words that lined up with their desires, saying just what they want to hear. They will close their ears to the truth and believe nothing but fables and myths. So this is Paul telling Timothy like, hey, this this is what's coming up. Like be prepared for this. So don't don't get discouraged when you see these things happen when it comes to pass. Right. And we could look at that now. Right. Nowadays, not <laughs> in our times, it is it came to pass. Many people don't try to listen to what the truth is because they want things to be pretty up and they want it to sound like like um good to their ears to help them in their sin to babysit them right but if god is calling us to speak the truth we can't be so succumbed about what the world think of us and how they see us or how we should be saying things when god have called us to speak the truth right so this is Paul encouraging Timothy to don't worry about that. And that's basically what a lot of people need nowadays to be encouraged. I know for me, when I first started my ministry and I received my first attack, I would never forget it was online. And and I remember the Holy Spirit really telling me to set my face as a flint and don't be afraid of their faces because he knew this was going to happen. But I didn't know. 
But I, I thank God that he gave me that warning and prepared me for it because now I can face these things. I can face the people who probably don't like what I have to say. But if God give me the word to share, then I'm going to share it. But then that caused me to be sober and vigilant. I had to make sure and prepare myself for this attack, right? But I had to really set a watch for these things and moving forward because that showed me that if it happened then on the level I was at that point, <laughs> I didn't even have the wisdom and knowledge I have now. So just imagine, I was like to myself, like, just imagine when I do get more wisdom and knowledge as I grow in God, it's only going to become more like it's going to be more, more eyes on you, more people um, looking to you as a leader, right? You feeling the pressure, but we can't fold under that pressure, right? We can't be so quick to succumb to what they think or what they want us to do. Because a lot of times people will try to dictate what you should be doing, right? But if we're focused on what God said for us and our calling and our mission, we can't be too distracted on those things. And we can't deviate from the full purpose of what God called us to do, right? But that take a hard posture. We have to shift our heart. We have to shift our heart to really follow up to what God wants for us. And then we rest our hope fully on the grace of God. You know, when I when I think about the grace of God and I look at it, I didn't really use the grace a lot. I used to always say, yeah, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I'm able to do this. But I didn't really pull on the grace for every area of my life. But now I'm being intentional with it. And I want you guys to really be intentional with pulling on the grace of God. Because when we pull on the grace, the scripture says in 1 Peter verse um, 113, he said, rest your hope fully upon the grace. So our hope should be fully upon the grace of God. It's nothing that we do. Everything we do is supernatural. A lot of times people look at me as a single mom. They're like, how do you do all these things? It's by the grace of God. I can't explain it. That's my answer because he have graced me for this. He graced me to do what I do. And it's nothing else I could add or take away from it. It's truly by the grace of God. And the more we acknowledge the grace, come on, the more he will fulfill us with more grace for our calling, for our ministry, for our business, to be a mom, to be a wife. However it is what God have called you to, called you to he will grace us for these things. But we have to engage with grace. We have to be able to recognize that we need the grace. Like I just read, we can't be in, walking in pride and too proud and selfish to call on the grace of God and invite him into the things that we're doing. And another thing I want to point out is to stay passionate, right? We have to stay passionate for what he have called us to do. Just like when you were in a relationship, I could talk about myself. When I was in a relationship, I'm passionate about being in relationships. I'm passionate about the person I love. So every day I'm going to work towards how to love you better, how to really see how I can make you more happy and I'm excited to do it. So go back there, go back to that place where you left your passion or something that you're passionate about. Think about it. That's how we should be when it comes to the things of God. We should be passionate about these things. We should make sure that God's business is taken care of with excellence, right? But you have to find that passion. That passion it could be hidden, it could have been locked away. But I had to find that too because I came into podcasting not even knowing nothing. I left my job to come to full-time ministry and I had to grow a passion for ministry because this was something new for me. But I had to pull on the grace of God to get me through to continue to walk in ministry because it's not easy. Especially when you're trying something new and you don't know what you're doing like that. But I had to pull on the grace. I had to engage with the grace of God. So what is it that you need to do today to really be passionate about what you're doing for God? Work towards that every single day. Do not grow weary. Do not feel like you lost it all or you feel like you can't do these things. Because if you're passionate about something, like I just said, you're going to do whatever it takes to make sure that thing is taken care of. So go back and find your passion for the things he have called you to do. And whatever it is that your ministry is, right? When we look at ministry, ministry in Hebrew is an office. So if God called you to the office, an apostle, you're a teacher, you're a prophet, you're an evangelist, operate in your office. Do what 
do what you're supposed to be doing as a prophet, as your office. And that might look different from your friends. That might look different from other people. But if we look to God, the author and the finisher of our faith, he will begin to show us, okay, yeah, I called you to this office, but now you have to rely on me for your calling because we all called to different things. But as you operate in your office, you would know your calling, right? You would know your calling. You would know exactly what God is calling you to do. So I want to encourage you guys today to really focus on what God has called you to do and be sober, be, be vigilant. Ask him to bring back your passion for the things of God and ask him to expand your mindset. And I really want you guys to really tap into that and really allow God to grow on you with these things. Because a lot of times we get distracted. That's why the Bible says we have to be careful because the enemy war war around like a warring lion seeking who he can devour. So we lose track on what God has called us to, us to do. It's easy to be devoured, right? And listen, I ain't trying to be devoured. I'm, mm-mm. I'm trying to stay on the right track. That's why I, I ask God these things like, God, make me more passionate for the things of you. Let me do something new in my ministry. Let me do something new as a mom. I want to do something new in my business, but I have to pull on the creator, right? That's why he left us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach us these things that we need to know and the things that we're seeking answers for from, and we have to really engage with the Holy Spirit. And that's why I always say the Holy Spirit is my best friend because without the Holy Spirit, honestly, I don't know what I would be today. And we have to make sure that we always seek first the kingdom of God. And I remember hearing this scripture a lot and I truly understand it now because it says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added onto you. He didn't say, once you seek first the kingdom of God, then you have to add these things. He's add these things. He said, these things will be added onto you. <laughs> That's enough to rest your hope and confidence in the word. God said his word would never fail. So as you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added onto you. So whatever it is that you're seeking, whatever it is that you feel like you are lacking Go back and seek first the kingdom of God. Like I just talked about earlier, pay attention, be vigilant, be sober minded, be alert because God always talking. He's always speaking. He always telling us the things that he want us to do. But are you being obedient? Ask yourself that where, what happened to your passion? Is it every day that you waking up and working towards your gift, working towards your calling, working towards the thing God, God called you to to do every single day we get 24 hours in a day so every single day you should be working towards your gift your calling your ministry doing what god is calling you to do and pulling on the grace rest your hope on the grace of god knowing that by his grace you can complete all these tasks by the, by his grace you're able to operate in all the things he called you called you to do like come on i know i'm a woman and you know as a woman we we're wives we're real moms we're friends we're daughters and many times people are pulling on us but we have to make sure that we are in right standing with god and we're allowing him to fill us back up fill our cup up because as he fills us up we're able to pour out in these areas but we can't grow weary and not being filled because now when it's time for you to pour out into these areas, you're going to feel depleted, right? You're going to physically feel it and you're going to spiritually feel it. So let this encourage you today, every woman, let this encourage you today to really be sober, be vigilant, be encouraged, preach the gospel, evangelize. We're all called to be evangelists. So evangelize do the things that god called you to do tell somebody about jesus today i know i got convicted recently i was like god i haven't been telling more people about jesus i mean i do it now but i want to go to another level it's time to level up and every chance i get i say god 
help me in that area. I'm going to be evangelized every chance I get. I'm going to tell somebody about what God has done in my life. We all should start with our testimony, right? And that's how I started this podcast show. I started with my testimony. I walked this thing out with you guys. I was vulnerable. I was telling you guys everything that I have going on. And that's what wins souls, right? Because we're not perfect, right? And he didn't call us to be perfect. But at the same time, we have to, we all call to evangelize. Tell the people about your God and what he have done. And I want to share something. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. I had a conversation recently with someone and it's funny because I began to share with the person that this is my goal and I was telling them about a house that I want to buy in a particular area and it's so funny because the person was like well that area has million dollar homes and those homes are expensive but I'm like yeah that's where I'm going to get my home why not who told you you can't buy a home in a million dollar area who told you your home can't cost a million dollars when I know the God I serve. And that was an opportunity for me to really um, evangelize to her and let her know about the God I serve, right? It's certain situations that God will put us in to allow him to be glorified. Because if it was just me thinking that I can do it, by myself, of course, I probably would have had the same mindset like, oh, no, I don't think I can get a house in a million dollar home. When God said he would do a seedly abundantly more than we ever could think or imagine, I have to really scratch my mindset. I have to really stay focused on everything that God is calling me to do, but also scratch out my dreams and expand my mind to these things and be open to what God want to do and don't be, don't limit myself. Cause I used to do it all the time. Limit myself, limit my thinking and say, Oh, I only could do this much because sometimes it's about the environment that we grew up in. Right. A lot of times. And I know that was my case. It was the environment I blew, grew up in a lot of times. Like me, where I grew up, you guys know, I share my testimony all the time. Women like me was a s- statistic to be honest. But then when you know your worth in God and <laughs> When God take a girl like me and make her an ambassador of the number one colleges in the state of Florida, I couldn't do this alone. (laughs) I couldn't do this like nothing. No man could have did this for me. Only God could have did this. So that even increased my faith to go bigger, to be able to speak in front of board of directors, like to be on TV. I never even saw myself doing that. But that's why God said, expand, daughter, expand your mind. So I'm like, hey, yeah, that's the area I'm buying my home. Why not? So I just wanted to share that. So if you guys are really, I hope you guys are encouraged today. Be encouraged on what God is about to do. This is the month of joy. This is the month of gratitude. And we're also doing a challenge um, for the rest of this month. So make sure you guys are following us on Instagram and get on our mailing list because I'm going to send the challenge information to everyone on the mailing list. And you guys know, I did not leave an episode without giving you the tools you need to add faith to your purpose. So number one, today I'm going to say, ask God to remove any distractions out of your way. And be careful when you pray this prayer, because when I first prayed this prayer, people begin to fall off me. <laughs> I begin to see people fall off. So don't be alarmed when this begins to happen to you. This is the will of God. And in case you forget, if you prayed this prayer, because I did, God, Holy Spirit had to remind me like, hey, you prayed this prayer for the scratches to be removed. And we always think it's physical things, but it could be people. People could be distracting you, right? Number two, write down all the gifts God has called you to and create an action plan. When you create an action plan, that gets you to do something about it, right? You're not just writing down these things that God have gifted you with, but now you're creating an action plan to serve with the gifts that he have instilled in you, right? And the calling that's on your life. So begin to write it down and create an action plan with the Holy Spirit on ways you can serve with your gifts. And as you serve with your gifts, right, God will increase the passion for these things, 
he he see you being intentional about it and you're asking him these questions, he would increase that passion as you go out and do exactly what it is. And the three, ask God to increase your capacity to dream bigger. As you create your action plan, ask him to increase your capacity because a lot of times, like I said earlier, I dealt with that, the limited mindset, the limited thinking, but then it just limit God. It limit him from moving in your life, right? So create an action plan that's bigger than whatever you think you can do. And that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you was blessed and encouraged by this episode today. Be sober, be vigilant, and don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. Get on our email list. Get on and I'm going to leave everything in the show notes for you guys to join and don't forget to get on my calendar. Um, it's open for this month of March. So I'm going to leave that in the show notes as well. And be sober, be vigilant, be ready for what God will do today. We can't put a time frame on when God will move. So I pray that God will move in your life today like never before. And that's it for this week episode. I want to thank you guys for listening, for tuning in this week. And don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms. Let us know what you think of this week's episode. And don't forget to tag us on our social media so we can reshare. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe to the show. And share this episode with a friend. If this blessed you today, I challenge you to share this with three people. And until next week, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.